Um, again, I'm going to try to quickly find some uh, examples online of um, different bits I can use. For instance, I'll quickly grab a door. Um, I've just found one. Um, again, um, I'm just going to bring it in and paste it there. I'm going to scale it down. You can take your time doing this. I'm going to try to do it quite roughly because um, I am. I just want to demo to you the way to do this. Um, just scale it down so it fits nicely. So, I mean, it's, it's not fitting the most perfect one there, but let's just give it a bash. So that's quite fairly there. I mean, um, I'm going to show you another way to actually, if you, if you, if you. Um, if you were creating a high resolution version of the same model you wouldn't be uh, laying your textures out flat that way I'm going to show you that later on uh, to do how to do that as well so um, so that's my door if I again turn this off um, if I will say was um, just jpeg and just just load that up just to check it it's loaded up one to the other side all right so if I go back into my 3d max see the doors appeared there as well it's got a handle there I mean um, you, you could have modeled the handle in but just for now just for texturing purposes we'll just keep it keep it the same way again and I'll do the same for the tiles and everything else uh, just quick find quick uh, examples and uh, pretty much get rid of them uh, that way um so if I turn that on well also, um I want to add um I've got a tile texture here that I found it's a quite decent one. Again because we're not using uh tileable textures they're not um and the other method to do roof or wall is to use a procedural texture which is uh, used quite often in the industry uh, and especially for architectural visualization if you, if you want the resolution to be quite high so just for now I'm going to use this I'm going to place this the way it is um, I'll try to do this quite nicely so I'll just keep it like that I'll show you how to create a procedural texture next as well uh, later on and uh, so if you want to do that method you can by all means try that so I'm just gonna first roughly copy these across as you can see there's a seam on this side this, uh, let me just move that across so uh, that's nicely done um, you can make a copy of it just down here again um, it's just to see how it will appear first and then I can fix it make another copy on this side as well um, I'm going to go into um, 3D Max and see how that is actually looking um, so if I just again do the same thing just export it out We'll, we'll lay out quite roughly here yeah, and then we'll see how it actually looks so if I go into max now and give it a second you see that the tiles are actually laid out and they're not looking bad at all they look fine um, again uh, you could probably do with a bit more um, uh, the coloring of uh, things are not the best. I mean, the texture here, the stones are appearing to be quite big. I mean, I would definitely scale them down. Um, but just for now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, I'm going to now just quickly find a image of a window. Actually, this one will do. Um, so I know where my windows are. Uh, they're just all here. So let me just firstly paste the window in. Yep, there we go. Um, um, uh, 
Um, I'll, I'll use this tool here. House. Let's go to the one corner, go to the other corner. Again, take your time when you're doing this. I'm just doing it uh, quite fast to solve. So once your UVs are um, done, your layout, this is pretty simple to do, it's not difficult at all, you're just pretty much scaling everything down, um, finding your images, scaling on, putting on one, um, so, so it's a quite fairly simple thing to do. Um, Let's so, create another one. I could change the color of it later on if I want to as well. But, so I'm going to move this across just up here. Um, turn that off again. Hit file save as JPEG. Um, I'm going to max, and you'll see that uh, it's automatically loaded up the windows as well. So for the bit size inside, I'm going to look for a uh, quite. Maybe just do the chimney bit first and maybe look for some brick textures really quickly. I've just the first one that I found, I'm gonna just apply that. Um again go into Photoshop. I know where my chimney is, so I'm gonna move this across. Um, it's there. Kind of paint this texture. So I definitely have to scale the texture as well because it's too big at the moment. So I press Control T and uh, bring it down to a size that I'm happy with. As as you can see, I can zoom in. Chimney is not that big, so we don't want to have. Uh, too many bricks there, so let's, let's just rescale this and see how this will appear. See if we can utilize uh, one texture for the, the whole section. So, once that's done, hit enter. And I'm gonna go quickly check that. I'm not too sure how this will appear. The colors you can tweak them as well. Obviously, use the filters uh, and color correction in Photoshop. The different tools like go into image adjustments and mess around with the settings to blend the colors in. And that's uh, very important as well that you must do that. Um, there's some bits like the texture stretching. Um, and uh, what we can do in that instance is, for instance, uh, select, go into my texture, load up my texture again here. Yeah. So you can see it's appearing now. And um, see how it's stretching in the middle there. Uh, I can, I can actually go uh, here and select all the vertices, the center ones. I don't want everything to be selected, so I just want to select the center bits So that one, and I would also like to select, I think it's this one, no, this one. And what happens if I decide to scale that now? So if I scale that. See how it's looking normal on this side, uh, but it's awfully stretching on that side. Uh, what I can do is just um, first of all uh, take this whole section. If I hit all the faces here, um, 
I can separate all these faces here. And I can unweld them. Uh, sorry, uh, break them. So it's a separate object, as you can see. And then what I can do is now scale this instead, and the same way I was doing before. And you'll see that the texture is not being stretched now, so I'm pretty much sticking to that uh, the same way I was before, but um, it's, the texture is not being stretched. Again, I will do the same on this side as well. So I'll go up and select all the different bits. It's not the only way to do this, but then um, you can always um, experiment. So break that and stretch that ac across, and you'll see that the bricks appear much m a bit more um, nicely, evenly distributed, and it's not appearing to be stretched at all. Uh, as for this bit, we can even apply a generic texture to that in a second. You can go into detail and fix these up if you want to, but I'm just, just for the demo purposes, I'm going to just leave it the way it is. You can see the windows are there, uh, all the, the different sections are there. I'm going to apply some kind of uh, dark concrete texture there. So I'm going to quickly just try to find um, concrete texture. Mm. See, this will do fine for now. Uh, it's very generic, this one. Um, again, take your time when you find the textures and blend when you blend them in. Uh, for this section, I'm going to apply the concrete texture. So, if I go back into my Photoshop, oh, sorry. Uh, if I go into my Photoshop, uh, go into my UV layout. Um, Again, minimize that, bring my new texture in there, see this texture is quite big, uh, we're only going to be using it um, for demonstration purposes, so I'm just going to put that one there, just for now, uh, so it looks quite um, generic. I can even use the same one on this side uh, for this purposes as well, so it's quite generic. Um, Again, I'm, I'm really rushing this now, so just so to give you an idea how it's actually done. You can go experiment and create dirt textures for to make it much more believable, like put dirt in there and start painting that. Use different multiply and different uh, tools to actually make the brick work up here dirty. Um, let's save that, and what we should have now is pretty much all the it's textured um, so if I add that, ok and now jump into max and wait for a second you'll see all these bits will appear so that's the house pretty much near enough textured uh, the barrel is left and we've got this section here, I mean I'm just going to move this to a bit that's textured so just, just move it there um, Um, I'm not too sure about that face there, so I'm gonna separate that first. Um, plan out it so it's nice and flat. Maybe we can um, X Z to scale it. Um, best fit it actually. Yeah. I'll scale that down. And again, just place it where um, I know the genetic texture is. So if I load that up again, you can see all the bits that I'm adding. So the only thing that's left now is the pretty much the barrel to do. And the rest of the house are pretty much done. Again, take your time doing this. I've done it quite roughly, so if I come out of the 
if I come out and have the UV set up, you can see the house is there. Um, again, I've applied a very rough texture there. I can go in and start refining it, put dirt around this area as well. So one way to do that will be is back in Photoshop. Um, just for example, I'm gonna find I find a, another texture and for instance I've, I've got quite a few textures already uh, so I'm going to use this one um, and this is a quite cool way to do this and it works quite well it works fairly well so if I paste my texture in there it's, it's kind of way to uh, make the wall appear dirty so um, I'm gonna move this down to my my texture the one that I did of the um, Of that section, so if I keep going down, yep, there we go. Then yeah, just move it down to where your where your wall texture is. So it's all the way down here. And I'm gonna pretty much scale this to the right same kind of size as as the as the texture that's appearing here. So it doesn't have to be that it's so. So I'm gonna just position this like this. Take this out a bit, maybe. Bring this out a bit. <laughs> um. So if I hit multiply, um. That's, that's, so if I hit multiply, you'll see that this kind of merges the two textures together and giving it and uh, making it look dirty. But I don't want it to be that dirty that you know it takes over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the opacity a bit low as well. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, uh, a try overlay works really nicely as well. I like overlay. It wasn't multiply. It's the overlay that option that works quite nice. So if you hit overlay and uh, even put that up to maximum, you'll see how uh, the dirt kind of it creates this kind of effect as if the the wall is much more dirtier up up here. So if I put that there, move that up nicely there. I'll have to think of a way to do it um, for this section as well. So maybe just combine that and um, make a duplicate of it and scale it up. You can make it quite big. Again, take your time doing this. I'm doing this very roughly. And move that across onto this side as well. So it kind of does the same thing. Um, and let's do the same for the bottom as well. So if I do that, move this one back here. Let's keep it like that. I mean, I would fix it up if I was doing it um, myself. So if I scale that down and hit file save as JPEG again, um, this to, is to make the texture appear much more older and being used. Uh, sorry, if I go into 3D Studio Max, you'll see when it appears, it, it looks much more dirtier. So as you can see, that that's a bit too much there, but you, you get the idea of how to make something look much more uh, old um, just by using overlays or combining textures. These big stones are appearing to be too big because of the size in comparison to the tiles. I will definitely do that bit again and make it a bit more smaller. Um, the only thing that is left now is the barrels. 
and you will do the same thing again just find a quite genetic texture for for the barrels if you want to um, I'm gonna just try to find one quickly <coughs> I mean this one should do me fine um, I'm just gonna use that So I'm going to go into Photoshop again, load up my sections, paste the texture in. It's not the wood that you would find for the barrels, but um, since I've got it here, I'm going to put that in there. Again, this is quite rough. You take more time, make it look more realistic, make it look more believable. Um so if I just put that one there as well for now. So if I save that You'll see that um, when it appears, uh, so right now they're appearing to be, um, they're kind of appearing to be uh, all over the place. So the, the top bit looks okay, but the side book definitely needs to, to look more like a barrel. So if I go into my UV editor and um, select my barrel, uh, my texture. If I hit the face, uh, make sure one of these is selected. We're only going to do this for one, and then we're going to just copy the the options over. So, um, again, what we need to do is, um, um, if I hit on tools, um, go to relax. And keep the keep the boundaries and start relax or apply. Um, sorry, and scale this down a bit. We actually need to stretch it a bit so it kind of uh, appears. Uh, so let's see if I move it a bit that way. So when it appears like that, it looks much more believable. So I'm going to do the same here. And I'm gonna go in back into my Photoshop and look at my texture. I'm gonna just copy this section pretty much over and um, duplicate this bit so it kind of takes up more space onto this side. So just a bit like that. Um, put this one probably underneath. So just something like that. I save that out again. Again, because I'm used to doing this, um, I know what's going on. So, so I'll save that out, and now if I wait for it to load up, you'll see that this texture's looking much better now. Um, again, barrels don't look like that, so I can show you another thing that you can do. So, um, I'm gonna basically edit and copy that and paste it onto this one so it kind of fits that nicely so all the barrels are fixed so that's the barrels outside you can uh, go into Photoshop and you can put a metallic kind of rim around it if you want to but for I'll just leave it the way it is so that's pretty much um, a very rough crude way of texturing but uh, it, it should give you a good idea of how to do this when you're doing this uh, yourself uh, you, you'll have to take your time. Uh, I'll cut the video short now because I've gone on for this one quite long. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to show you uh, how to do um, some uh, some unwrapping using procedural textures. Doing the same thing again, but using a procedural texture instead. Um, then uh, this will work um, for you as well. So if you're doing higher resolution. Uh, models. So that was pretty much how to unwrap. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video.